history of this car? Was it? Uh, no, I, this car had been all like, over the country. Like the founder of UPS? You no, know, or no, like I, I found... Roto-Rooter, uh, you know, you know, he wanted to, he invented the toilet snake and he wanted to no, remember it by with the color or no, something. No, none of that, none of that. <laughs> Welcome to Hoobie's Garage. Well, uh, Jay Leno's garage, actually. The, I'm the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is one of the greatest car collections in the country right here. But this, this is my car. It is my 2004 Mercedes Maybach 62. And I just shot a video here with Jay Leno and his equivalent from a different generation, the Mercedes 600 Grocer. So in a few months when the video comes out, you'll get to see my Maybach 62 versus the 600. But we didn't drive his car in that video. We're actually driving the car in my video today and then we're taking this on a road trip to Scottsdale to see some more incredible cars. But first, I'm in Jay Leno's garage. This is the second time I've been here. The first time was for his show on CNBC where they blindfolded me and I guessed all the cars, including this SLR McLaren, which uh, I now own, which is just crazy. But that was the car that I rode in with him, a McLaren F1 behind me. But uh, you look around, the cars in here are just absolutely incredible. A 65 Shelby GT350. All the Jags, including an E-Type project that he just got right here in 1963. Uh, I could spend forever in here, but I do have to hit the road to get to Scottsdale. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of distracted. There's just so much here. A McLaren F1 just hanging out, a P1, a 12C, uh, just so much in here. And I got to experience uh, the equivalent from a different decade with the 600 grocer. He let me drive it. So let's go to that footage in the car. Holy moly. Down below, right down there. See the white button? Yep. Oh, yep. Just push it in. Yeah, okay. What does that do? Uh, unlocks the self leveling system. Oh, I see. You hear my whiny. There's a little extra, yeah. It's That's a, a whiny supercharger. <laughs> the greenhouse. I mean, I love mm -hmm. you know, It's just a nice, and this is your refrigerator right here. Oh, so in my car, you, you could never reach it, but this one, yeah. you can drink and drive, I guess. It was some less frowned upon. Well, the Germans <laughs> called this the Gleason. Because when Jackie Gleason was doing a show in Miami, he had one of these, and he picked up two people at the airport. The people in the front were cold, and the people in the back were just sweaty from the heat in the room. It was just so hot. So he said, any way to kind of get some air conditioning to people in the back. So they put this in and then made it a refrigerator so mm. the air conditioner goes through. But would they have rear air in the longer wheelbase cars? Because I can't imagine like Elvis being in the back of one of these without sure, AC just, you know, I'm sure they probably melting, did. you know? You are, I like that 49 Cadillac you did. So oh, you thank know. you. Yeah. I that like was... that it looks stock. Yes. Well, I saw it at a car show. And, oh, yeah, that's right. You asked and, the guy. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. When I asked, hey, oh, if, you ever, right. if you ever want to sell it, oh, just yeah. let me know. And I, I had no ability to purchase it at the time when I said oh, that. Oh, I see. About 10 years go by, and the timing was just right. The transmission broke on this car just recently? Or? Yeah, we just fixed it last week. Oh, okay. well, again, what it was was, that, you know, the bands in the transmission, they had been relined, relined, but the band was 60 years old. Mm. And the band metal fatigue. So we just replaced it. That was fun. But again, that's what I love about this stuff. It's mechanical. Oh, so like, what's, yeah. a, what's a McLaren 12C gonna be like when it's 50 years old or yeah. something like that, yeah. It's like my uh, F1 McLaren is based on some- Should I turn for airport? Right here, some old computer and there aren't any. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna read it and do it, you have to have this particular computer and, and, and that's it. So yeah, it's one guy flying around fixing them, yeah. right? Yeah, that's funny, yeah. Yeah, you had Doug DeMuro out and took him for a ride in the F1. 
but you didn't let him drive it. You let me drive your car, so that's a well, nice little. This is not the F1. <laughs> I suppose. Do you know the ownership history of this car? Was it? Uh, no, I. This car had been all like, over the country. Like the founder of UPS, you no, know, or no, like I, I found Roto Rooter, uh, you know, you know, he wanted to. He invented the toilet snake, and he wanted to no, remember it by with the color or something. No, none of that. None of that. <laughs> you uh, replaced the horse hair in it. No, I, I, I may do that at some point. Yeah. It feels a little, it's starting to get a little squishy. I need to do it in my, uh, I have an 84 300 SD and it's, it's, uh, oh, you got an SD? Bringing, bouncing around, yep. That's the diesel, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What year? 83? 84. Oh, mine was, I bought one new in 83. And it was the only Mercedes Benz you could sell in, in California. Because the gas cars did not beat emissions. Hmm. So for 83, you were limited to just diesels. I remember, didn't you mention it like in your uh, Turbo R video that you traded it in for the Bentley Turbo R? Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a little right. upgrade in power. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a Turbo R and I couldn't keep on top of the uh, leaks, but it was a pretty neglected one. It leaked? Boy, mine has never, mine really? has been bulletproof for you almost are, 30 years. Well, you know? Nowadays, I have a I have a 2001 Bentley Azur. Right. The first owner was Jean Claude Van Damme. That's oh, all right. And I, I bought it for twenty five thousand bucks. Wow. And uh, you know it's another three hundred plus thousand dollar car. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, it yeah. fixed a few little things on it, but yeah. it's been solid for years. Well, that's funny. I used to have Jean Claude on the show all the time. Oh, you can hit these bumps. <laughs> I'm bracing for them like it's an old car, but it, you can take it just fine. Oh, yeah, no, these are... Well, thank you so much for letting me drive this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. We'll uh, yeah, finish up uh, filming your episode, and then I'll hit the road for Scottsdale. I, I haven't taken that on a load, long trip yet, so fingers crossed. That thing's awesome. Are you related to the Hoovers? The Jay Edgars and all that? Huh, no. What an amazing opportunity. I can't wait for you all to see the video when it comes out with Jay and his car. But now, well, we have a road trip to take to Scottsdale. I've never taken this car on a long trip before, so hopefully it behaves. But uh, it's in good company currently. Oh my gosh. I don't want to leave, but we have to. On the road and in this famous LA traffic, I'm in the carpool lane, even though I'm here by myself, which you're not supposed to do. But, uh, I have the curtains closed in the back and I can't imagine anybody thinking that somebody would be by themselves just driving around in a long wheelbase, my box, so with the curtains closed, hopefully they assume that I'm not alone. And to make an excuse, I do have a very long drive ahead of me, so the less traffic, the better. Well, we're about halfway through the journey and I'm still blown away by this day as the sun goes down. A total pinch myself moment, the opportunity to drive that legendary car, a 600 grosser, but then Jay Leno's with a supercharger on it, uh, just incredible. But it's amazing how similar the cars feel, even though they're 30 years apart. Both have air ride suspension, just majestic in the ride quality, so quiet, so smooth. I need one of those. <laughs> I need a lot of those cars in Jay Leno's garage, but uh, that one, uh, absolutely exceptional. But the maintenance costs, like the Maybach, are quite spicy as well. We talk about it a bit in Jay Leno's video. I can't wait for you all to see it. It'll be a few months. But now, onward to Scottsdale in the morning, even more amazing cars. Not only do we get to experience another bucket list dream car, but also we get to tour Craig Jackson's collection. He's the CEO of Barrett Jackson. I've never seen it in person before, but from what I've seen in photos and videos, it's like the Scottsdale Jay Leno's garage. So <laughs> we're doing this all over again tomorrow. It's just, just nuts. Well, it's the next morning here in Scottsdale and this car was absolutely flawless, incredible through the desert. Uh, got to some uh, decent speed as well, but now it's time to say goodbye and I am so sad. Uh, I'm leaving this car, well, not forever, but for a month. Through the holidays, I'll come back to the Bach when the Scottsdale auction takes place here in January. And there will be a car show that this car is in on the fairgrounds there in Scottsdale, basically future classics, collectibles. This will be in it when the auction is taking place. Uh, but I do have a replacement to drive around today. It's being unloaded off the truck right now. Look at this. 
the Burton Batmobile. This is a tribute, but it's about the coolest tribute ever. Let's get this thing off the truck and take a closer look. So this Batmobile, which is selling in the 2023 Scottsdale auction, January 21st through 29th, isn't the actual movie car, but it's about the coolest tribute there is because it's powered by a Boeing turbine engine. Just ridiculous, based on a 1985 Corvette. But we go in depth on this car on Barrett Jackson's YouTube page, which I'll have linked below. So we'll be doing a quick drive of this thing later, but first let's go out here where we're seeing some other cars waiting for their first look selling in Scottsdale, along with some of Barrett Jackson's in-house restorations like the 69 Camaro and the 68 GT500. But then look at this thing. <laughs> I'm about to go for a ride with Craig Jackson in one of his personal cars, a McLaren P1, part of the hypercar holy trinity along with the Porsche 918 and a LaFerrari. And the P1 was the lowest production of something like 375 built. Obviously there was that one that floated around in Hurricane Ian and was totaled, but the hybrid twin turbo V8 drivetrain on these things puts out a total of 900 horsepower, 0 to 60 around 2.5 seconds, and the color is just unreal. It actually started as a silver car, but was sent back to McLaren for this racing chrome finish, as they call it. I've always wanted to experience one of these, and when I saw Craig buy this, I've been begging for the opportunity, which will happen as soon as the boss joins us. Look at this. All right, flip, down. You're gonna wanna put your seat belt on. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> coming through the functional roof scoop there. You can hear the wastegates and the yeah. turbos. It's amazing. You don't need a stereo, the soundtrack's right there. <laughs> Jeez, this is insane. You wouldn't know it's a hybrid. No, it's very visceral. You only feel the hybrid when you first take off. Those electric motors really kick in. This is twin turbo. You don't feel any right. turbo lag. It's fast. Yeah. Yeah, the P1, it's so elegant. The Senna is pretty overstyled, I think. Yes. It looks, even though it's faster around the Nürburgring and all that, I, I yeah. think this is, this is a lot more special. It's a much more worthy successor of the F1, obviously. Yeah, only difference we didn't have the steering wheel in the middle. Right. <laughs> but then, if uh, you know Greta Thunberg shows up, you can flip a few buttons, and it's all electric for a few miles, twenty miles or so, right? Uh, seven. Oh, seven. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's enough for the commute, right? Yeah, you gotta go into E mode. Amazing. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. This car is just artwork. Isn't it? If you look inside the doors at all the different carbon, the matty, the glossy, the big mat for nice. the actual tub, the matty on the outside. Look inside the doors, just all the artwork of it. Here you've got the matty, the gloss, just the way McLaren does it. Look inside the engine compartment. I mean, it's all carbon. So where does the battery live on this car? I think it's in a container like right behind mm. here. So they took the battery out. These have had uh, issues where you have to replace the card. So we replace the card that controls all of that. Mm. So, so how much does that run, the replacement battery? 180,000. Oh, is that Somewhere all? in there. <laughs> well, I mean, with the- More than a new plaid. You know. <laughs> I just fell in love with the car when I first saw this particular one, this chrome, the red calipers, just the whole car just did it for mm -hmm. me. I remember clearly you tiptoeing off the block, coming down and sneaking your hand up well there was yeah i'd had i was actually buying the car in the summer mm -hmm. and uh it was in for service for about four months and mm -hmm. i'm like well that's not a good omen right so i'm like maybe this isn't for me and then he goes well i'm gonna put it in the auction make a long story short and i go i don't know maybe i'll bid on it 
and uh, it came in within 50,000 of what we had negotiated before. So I go, I knew I was right on the mm -hmm. price. I go, you know, I think I made a good offer on it. He did a good job of paying for all the bills to bring it up to snuff. The car is low mileage, it just hadn't been driven a lot. So it had a, it needed a full service done to it. And mm -hmm. it's got new tires on it. And they went through virtually every system on the car. And yeah, I've been driving it since then. Obviously this, this is the new hot one, so you probably drive it a little more, but Veyron versus P1. Oh no, the new hot one's inside. Oh really? We'll take it for a ride oh, next. Okay. Yeah, that'll be a surprise. Well, you're getting one. Have you driven your Z06 yet? No, it showed up while I'm out of town. It showed up this morning. Have you heard one yet? No. This sounds a little more visceral. This up front. <laughs> P1 does. Look at how fast this thing is. And Holy you can crap. do it at 30 miles an hour. Wow. And it just tucks that top back down in. All right. We'll get ready to engage for the Batmobile next. <laughs> okay. Turbines to power. There you go. <laughs> That does not sound like a Corvette. That, it sounds like a Ferrari 458. That's awesome. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Wow. That's not cool. That's amazing. You're not going that fast. Right. It sounds fast. That engine is just spinning. They spent a lot of time on the sound. Well, I don't think the Batmobile will be as fast as this. <laughs> it'll be a different kind of noise. It'll be a whoosh. All right, I like it. Flip the button right there that says fuel pump. Fuel right pump there. on. Okay. Okay. Okay, you hear it clicking? Yeah. Okay. Now the right, the red one that says start, flip that up. Yeah. Okay, flip that on. As soon as this thing up here gets to 3,500, uh -huh. flip that other one right next to it on. This one on? Yeah. Okay. And then when that gets to 15,000, flip that switch that you're on your right now, flip that off. Off, okay. Yep. So, ignition. Flip that on. Waiting for 3,500. 3,500, flip that one on. On? Okay. 10,000, we flip the, it off. When that gets to 15,000, 15. then flip that off. Oh my God. And surprisingly smooth. Batman wouldn't get beat up in this thing. The suspension feels like a very stock, you know, C4 Corvette, which is what you're based off, a 1985 Corvette. This is incredible. So this will be selling no reserve at the Scottsdale auction. And whoever gets this, they'll be smiling every time they see it and drive it. What a thing. Just shutting it down. <laughs> What's the best part? It's selling at no reserve. This can be your turbine Batmobile. <laughs> you want to try it? Sure. Absolutely insane. I can't wait for you all to see the preview of this. Uh, and then when Craig's finished with his drive, we're gonna go for a tour of his Shelby collection, which is unreal. How young I was when I first took over the company. <laughs> well, you've aged well. Yeah. You've had a glow up. I've had uh, a fun career. Holy moly. This is what I love. This I love, is the shrine. I love oh. buying cars, restoring them, chasing the history. I grew up restoring one-off classics, but I grew up around muscle cars. So a lot, large part of my collection is ultra-rare muscle cars, and I love the modern supercars. Well, the videos on these two, Little Red, and uh, the Green Hornet, which is on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Just an incredible story finding these. And in the condition they were in, considering 
you know, how special they were. Yep. Yeah. Both were known to be crushed. Both owners had called Sack. Sack told them both of them were crushed. But there's interesting stories, and I'll walk you through the car. So we found the Hornet first. It had been restored years ago. I bought it through Steve Davis. For those that haven't seen the YouTube video, we got the either the kids or the people that actually worked on the car. So the son of the gentleman that made the Conlick fuel injection. Now, mind you, this mm. is ultra rare. This is a computer that runs the direct multi-port fuel injection on this car in 1968. And yeah. he, we had some of the parts, he had some of the parts, he had the drawings. So we got this car it back and running. Wild with, to see it. And isn't it? I mean, it, it looks like you know, a modern fuel injection, but then with using 60s, you know, uh, fittings and wiring. Pretty high tech for its time. It runs great. It dynoed uh, at right at 500 horsepower. So this is the first car we found, but this was the first car built. So Little Red, Carol built this right when he came back from winning Le Mans, and mm -hmm. this was his street Ferrari eater. This has leather seats, Ferrari carpets, and two blowers. Holy moly. So it's kind of like his, uh, his uh, Cobra that he was racing the 275 GTB with. with yes, the after finding the paperwork for the Green Hornet, I found the VIN number, and Jason Billups uh, hired someone. Everybody was looking for it off its Shelby number, but mm. neither this car nor the Hornet ever had Shelby numbers attached to them. These cars are built by two different companies though. This is built by Shelby America in Los Angeles. This is built by Shelby Automotive in Dearborn. This they wanted to street though. So it has independent rear suspension, four wheel disc brakes and a disc brake setup on it using Jaguar parts. Really? So and like we e have all E-type. Really? And we found the son of the guy that made the RS gave us the original blueprints That's and amazing. helped us fabricate. Then we found a bunch of the original parts, which is in the show, that how we chased them down. Mm. And both cars came to life, both EXP 500s. So I imagine this one, it can take a turn, but in a drag race. Is, this one's this, much faster. Yeah. Uh, I took it out to Apex and it pulled this car by quite a bit. Mm. This one smokes the tires through all three <laughs> gears if you don't feather the throttle. Wow all the way down the straightaway at Apex. This was sold at Littleton, Colorado, a group of six cars. This was one of the six cars. So oh, another, this- Another fuel injected car? This is the second one. And these are the only two running. This one's also a prototype for a lot of the KR parts. So this is the only other running Conlig fuel injected car. And these are the two 68s. They made some 69s. So an air conditioning automatic on automatic. Yeah. Little red was ordered with air conditioning, but taken off to fit this, the blower. <laughs> yeah. Little red's pretty rare that it's also factory ordered with a 428 with two four barrels in a coupe with air conditioning. Only one ever ordered like that. Wow. How is it hiding in plain sight? The gentleman that owned it called and said, I have a 1968 Shelby coupe that I think is Little Red. They go, well, they ne never made a 1968, it's 1967. Mm -hmm. That's because this car is all the parts that were left over when we restored Little Red. So when we were restoring Little Red, we either had to take it to where it ended life as a 68, the way it was found, or back to a 67. So rather than, what do I do with all these one-off 68, right. 69 parts? We built a car the way Little Red ended its life. And there's actual photographs of the engine back at the end. It was one blower trying to figure out how they could make it live. Mm -hmm. One blower on it, no, uh, no working air conditioning. All the Shelby guys are like, it's got so many one-off parts, what are you gonna do with them? I decided, let's build a car. That's the way it started life. This is the way it ended life. And then it was sold. They just took the blower off of it and sold the car. This another fairly rare car. This is a 66 GT350 mm -hmm. Shelby convertible. 
They made four. They made two automatics, two four speeds. This That's is the four red speed. four speed. Wow. There's a picture of Carol in the day. Yeah. Uh, pretty rare car. I bought it because it rarely one of these comes up for sale. Yeah. It just seemed to fit the collection. This is the first 427 wide hip car. Oh, I see. So yeah. this car was originally built as a narrow hip car. It was sold out of sequence. I asked Carol about the car. Should have got it on videotape. Wasn't even thinking about <laughs> that back right. in the day. Yep. And he looked at the car and he goes, yeah, we pulled that off the line because we wanted to bring the, the wheels out to get more traction on these cars. So pretty rare car. Factory, real 427 side oiler. The later cars, when they were doing these, actually had 428s because they ran out of 427s. But this is a 427 side oiler car. Use it for road rallies. I've had this car probably since 2002, somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, the closest I ever got to Carroll Shelby was at uh, Bear Jackson High School going there, and I hear a watch out when I'm walking outside. Watch out! And it was him in a golf cart just flying by full speed and realized, it took me a second to realize, I almost got ran over by Carol Shelby in a golf cart. Memorable day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always remember this. <laughs> that's, that's, as, that's as close as I got, but this is, this is incredible. So this is the I, Shelby room and then the, all the memorabilia around here and a, a lot of times with Carol, but this is my history, all the auction gavels from when I've run the company. These trophies go to that car up there, which is at corporate, you'll see it over there. It's oh, in it's all metal. Down. Yeah. So I bought it back at the auction, and that was the first collector car my parents had ever purchased prior to me being born. And I'm going to restore it and take it back and take it on the show circuit. So, you know, I love the history of these cars. I grew up with these cars, and you know, that's what started the auction. That and uh, charity, which is still a big part, but. I still restore my own cars. Uh, yeah. One in here we're doing. If you want to roll into here, it's an L88 Corvette. Uh, we're doing a frame off on it. Well, thank you so much for the tour. And yeah. it's been an amazing road trip, obviously. I'm kind of sad to say goodbye to my Maybach that I bought to, in Houston, but I'll be back in Scottsdale here in about a month when we have the auction. And the future event car show. Yes, absolutely. Future collector car show. Yep, the car will be there and uh, you'll be bringing Something, I imagine? Yeah. What's your future classic? I'll bring a 1988 Porsche Slope Nose. So I grew up with the poster, the, the, the girl, the, the wine bottle, and the <laughs> yep. Slope Nose. Uh -huh. And I always wanted a Slope Nose. And uh, I couldn't afford one, so I built Slope Noses. Built one for myself, black, cork interior. Copied one that was on the showroom for sale. Sort of like the Batmobile, just sort of, yeah, I think it's about <laughs> the proportion in there taking pictures all the time and built one. Then I was driving it around, everybody's like, would you build me one? So I started building those and that ended up, that mule car became our boardroom table. I ended up finding a, if it's not the car, one exactly like it and bought it and that's what I'm gonna bring to the Future Collector Car Show. I love all eras of the cars. Uh, the smog years were tougher and I think the, the Germans uh, figured it out quicker than everybody else mm. with what? turbos and fuel injection. <laughs> right. Well, it's been a fun three years for me, you know, being a part of the auctions, being a part of the live TV coverage and coming as a kid. So, you know, thank you for everything. This no. is, it's been, thank you, Tyler. it's been awesome. Well, I'm back home in the dumbest garage in all of YouTube now, and this was just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Craig's collection. Hopefully more videos in the future there, but if there ever was a car guy Mount Rushmore, I'm sure Craig Jackson and Jay Leno would be on it. I mean, Leno is one of the founding fathers of car YouTube, sharing his passion and collection with us for over a decade now, basically paving the way to mainstream this platform. Craig took an annual car auction held in a tent in a parking lot and turned it into a massive multimedia empire, exploding the car hobby with these massive pioneering events that were among the first to be televised, which captured the imagination of me as a kid, and I'm sure millions of others, showing the world the increasing appreciation of not just blue chip collectible cars like a Duesenberger or Ferrari 250 GTO, but also customs, resto mods, muscle cars, and beyond. And here I am, a total idiot, palling around with both of them within 24 hours. 
then flying home to take delivery of my Z06. So I'm absolutely so grateful for the opportunity and for you all watching these videos and making this possible. So be sure to subscribe to Jay Leno's Garage so you don't miss our upcoming video together. And also Barrett Jackson's YouTube channel, which I shot a lot of new content for them coming out soon as well. I also put some links below with the cars that we discussed, like the Hunt for Little Red. That's a video you don't want to miss on their YouTube channel. And also, if you're in Scottsdale or want to be, you don't want to miss the auction January 21st through 29th, which you can also watch on History and FYI. And you'll see me and the Maybach reunited at the Future Collector Car Show at the Polo Fields in Westworld, where the auction takes place on January 22nd. And as always, thank you so much for watching. <sighs> Crazy week.